Lemon Amiga Presents A Play Giant Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show Again, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Interphase, developed by the assembly line and published by Imageworks in 1990. taking down a tunnel which connects various levels and we are heading towards the very first level of the game you can see that we have a bird in front of us and that will plot out the very best line through this tunnel and as long as we follow that bird and don't collide with anything we won't take too much damage I remember when I first played this game, I've attempted to play this game maybe four or five times in my lifetime. Every single time I boot this game up, it's an absolute mystery what I'm supposed to do, and what everything is supposed to do, and what everything does. It all looks pretty mysterious, and you can't seem to interact with anything either. So if you type in a secret password that I found out on that Lemon Amiga website into the introduction sequence, and that is Fanny, that will come up with this sequence where it shows us all of the denizens that can be found within the game. And the aim of this game is, well, we play as two characters, Kathy, that you can see the woman character in the middle of the screen, that's our spy runner, and she inhabits the real world. And we also have Chad, which you can see wears a big helmet in the background, and that's the guy in the introduction who looks like he's a biker. Chad is a dreamer, that's the guy that we control, and he's a dreamer in cyberspace. So this game is basically cyber die hard and in cyber die hard we have to infiltrate a building and we have to get our spy runner all the way through it taking a look at the controls before we take a look at that game if you press the left mouse button we can fire that will destroy some enemies if we hold down the right mouse button and roll that up and down that will speed us up and accelerate and stop us and even make us go in reverse I think as well and that thing over there I think that's a generator where the aliens will sprout from and so if you want to get rid of them press enter and that puts us into missile mode and when that locks on it comes up on the screen and then you can press fire to blow it up some things can only be blown up with a missile and some things can be blown up with a plasma bulbs and you can see that red arch in the background that's actually an energy recharge point we'll have to definitely make note of that and you can see all the different things there on the display board we can press with the arrow those various buttons and you can see a new message as well in the bottom corner and by pressing the 4 key we can look to the left and also by pressing 2 we can look back well there you go that's number 2 and we can also if we press the 6 key we can look to the right and if we press 8 that will return us back to the forward view and to get into pointer mode if we hold down the right hand mouse button and click with the left that will give us a pointer and there are also some quick keys that we'll definitely have to memorize activating the docking mode definitely with D map mode is actually B and to check out those messages it's M and A to get rid of that annoying flashing thing in the bottom corner and you can see the squares on the bottom of the screen as we move through these we'll move through different decks we're now on deck number one and if we move back through that it will move back onto deck number zero so if we go through the top one I'll cycle all the way back to deck number seven there are eight decks on every single level and they will cycle through them in order so if you want to find deck five it's just two decks 
higher up than this one. And by checking out the messages, it's saying that Kathy has found a door which is electrically sealed and we'll have to find a button to open it up. What does that mean? Well, that means that our spy runner, which is in the real world, has found a door and she needs that unlocked in cyberspace. And what we're in is an office environment at the moment with lots of office things dotted around and that's why they are reminiscent of office furniture. So in Dream Track Corporation we begin on the basement in the bottom floor just like Die Hard and always read the small print it says. So we can zoom in and out of the blueprint of the map of the real world and this level is represented by the eight decks that we can see in cyberspace and there is the main reception area and there's also a security area and also a lift up as well so that's the lift to the next level and you can see there is also a power supply there power unit is in the security room and that's the arch that we saw I think at the beginning of the game and there's a lift there which marks the exit right at the very start of the game we are delayed because we can't even get into the building itself we've managed to get into the main reception you can see the green marker on the blueprint is where Kathy is standing and I think she's standing in reception and it's our job to unlock that door what can we do about that well you can see in this environment there's all kinds of office things floating around but also as well some enemies which will get in our way and you can also see that by holding down both mouse buttons that reveals well you can see a radar as well with various things flying around that might come in handy a bit later on and the time and also the damage that we've taken so far definitely you'll have to take note of that damage because if we crash into anything or if anything crashes into us we'll take some damage and it's a time critical game so we'll have to make use of that time as well so now that we at least understand the controls of the game let's return back to that title screen and let's attempt to go through this and because things are time critical we'll have to march on there and we'll have to get things right and in the right order this title music is a direct ripoff of She Drives Me Crazy by the Fine Young Cannibals that was released in December 1988 and that is definitely an unlicensed sample. This game was given away free on the cover of ST format and also Amiga format and the makers of this game, some of them also worked on Cybercron 3 and the graphics artist Danny Enmott also worked on Star Glider 2. At the very start of the game it's imperative not to take too much damage and this flows a little bit quicker if you have an Amiga 1200 definitely if you've got an Amiga 500 you'll find this game is a little bit laggy but with the 12 you get those frames back and that means it's a little bit smoother as well so let's march on back to that first level we now start back in the office again and there isn't too much to interact with at this point and you can see we can fly around with our ship and so let's just familiarize ourselves with this and eventually we'll get a message from Kathy saying that she's reached the door and we'll have to find a way to unlock it that means we can go all the way back to the map that we saw before and now if we zoom in on that area by pressing the up and the down buttons at the very bottom of that screen that will hopefully highlight the problem at hand so you can see it's a pretty small map at the beginning of the game so it won't take as long to navigate this very first level so we can use the pointer there to zoom in on any area that we like and we can see something in this corner let's just zoom in it's a security camera so that security camera will definitely have to be activated let's check out the info security 
infrared motion detector so we'll have to deactivate this at some point during the rest of this level. In the meantime we can zoom back out of that and then hopefully zoom back in on our immediate objectives and at the start of every level before you've even played the level I definitely recommend checking out all of the objectives in the game you can see some more security doors there and you can see some guards hanging around in that security bay so we'll have to figure out perhaps how to get rid of them and at the moment we're standing in front of a door by clicking on that and clicking the info it will tell us what it is it's a security door high tensile steel you can't do anything about it and the only way that Kathy is going to get through that is if we blow that away and destroy that in cyberspace so by clicking on that that's the last thing that we have activated or at least selected on the map that will automatically mean that we can track that wherever it is and you can see there it is by blowing it up that now opens up that door so let's try that again let's click on that security camera navigate towards that and it tells us that it's on this level and it tells us which way to go so there it is blow that up and that means that the security camera now in the real world should now be deactivated and there's another one and it's time critical Kathy will be running towards these security cameras at high speed so it's telling us it's a level above and so let's move a level above it's still a level above and it's still a level above that so I'm not quite sure what level it is let's get a move on and here it is and so we'll have to track that on whatever level it is this is the one that's a security camera and hopefully if we return back to that map Kathy has just run past that and that means hopefully we've blown it up in time that will alert security so we'll have to open this door before security catch Kathy otherwise it's going to be game over pretty quickly so the doors are cubes so we know what to look for it's a cube and the arrows point us the way to go to the objective as long as we click on the nav icon and that means that we can navigate towards that and luckily Kathy was just hiding behind the door so that's a recharge point if we need some power at this point and now the door is closed security is no problem the next problem and the last problem in this game or at least on this level is the final security door let's check out this navicom locked so now it's below us somewhere we just have to fly down to that level and hopefully take our time because we don't want to take too much damage at this point and look at that nice and easy <coughs> And at this point it's a good idea to recharge before we go on to the second level and that means that if we take any damage in the tunnel it's not going to wipe us out completely so you can see we can play around at this stage the level is now complete Kathy will now give us a message when she's reached the elevator and again we can read the messages by pressing M and we can press A to get rid of the annoying beeping sound and that flashing thing when a new message has come through so now where am I going I'm looking at level zero so that means I'm looking for the recharge point so just like other games that we've seen if we go through well star glider for one thing if you go through this energy recharge point just like this and you're moving slow enough that will recharge your energy just by one point and it only goes up by one point every time you move through that gate so by moving backwards and forwards like a vacuum cleaner we can hoover up that energy and you can see the flashing thing let's see what Kathy's talking about messages guess what I'm in the lift operate the mechanism to take me to that next level so we've been now running for six minutes and six seconds she's managed to get through that last security door and now she's at the lift or at the elevator so now we need to move up a few levels to get to where the elevator is in the virtual world and it's time to clean up the last few enemies I don't think you get any score in this game and so damage and time is what you really need to watch out for 
So every single level in this game has its own scenario. You can see we've blown up that switch in front of us and the enemies at this point aren't too much to be annoying that you have to blow them up which is fantastic. You can see a nice desk plant floating around or whatever that is. That reminds me of an 80s certain thing and here is the exit and moving slowly through the exit it will now open just like James Bond and now if we collide with the scenery it will take damage but if we press that space bar this is the ideal time to save it up and as soon as we enter a tunnel is the best time just hammer on that space bar and then we can check out those load and save options and unfortunately we can only load and save from a tunnel pressing that space bar right at the end of that tunnel you can see that by clicking on load and save we can activate that and that's an ideal time what I'm actually going to do because I've played this game before on a quick warm-up try I'm actually going to load up my save from my warm-up try level 2 and that will bring us out at the exit of that tunnel and that will just mean that we've got slightly more energy to tackle this second level Cafe will be running from the get-go and by clicking on these things that's a turntable computer controlled and it redirects the enemy's robots that's important to know because it will also redirect Cafe as well and for this one we're gonna have to figure out the solution I'm at the junction which way so that means that we've found basically our first switch or well our turntable and for that turntable we'll need to figure out where the switch is in order to activate that turntable and what else have we got in that room it's another power that's another power generator that's the energy things that you saw earlier on if you collide with that I think it's a one hit recharge if you find one of those on the level just collide with that or dock with that I think you have to dock with it and that will give us a free energy recharge for free and you can see a pressure pad that will unleash the guards and the security doors are there and let's see what else this is that's another one of those rotating things that moves us around so by clicking on that we can actually activate that in advance and by hovering over this and I think we have to dock and we can also use a tractor beam as well this is actually the key for the revolving mechanism we can use our tractor beam to move that key around and you can use any key because it is possible to blow up this key if you blow it up by mistake you can find another key and you can put that back into the same lock and hopefully by deactivating the tractor beam it will automatically lock back into that keyhole for us you can see it's doing that and then we'll have to press D to dock or whatever it is or click on that button and then simply run into that again blowing it up by mistake is a penalty because that means we can no longer activate that turntable without finding another key and that's pretty much a detriment to this level and because this second level is pretty difficult I'm going to actually need to do this and figure this out the hard way and I'm at the junction which way am I supposed to go well at this point having blown up the key it would seem that if we activate one of these it's gonna alert the guards so what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna load it up all over again and we're gonna try that level again gives us the briefest moment at the beginning of virtually every level to get some energy back and you can see we can fall down different levels we're now on level one it doesn't really matter as long as well cafe isn't going to go anywhere until we start moving doors around and opening things but this 
level isn't time critical until she starts running and then you're going to have to open those doors pretty quickly and move those rotating things pretty quickly so that she doesn't get stopped. If she does get stopped for any reason then the guards will catch us and that means that we no longer are able to infiltrate this building or this skyscraper, this Nakatomi skyscraper where we are at the moment. So you can see on this level we've managed to find the turntable and that's the one in front of the guard room. Let's dock with that and by pressing that fire button we can then change the turntable so it now points upwards so that hopefully when the guards emerge they will now run upwards instead of running towards us. We can now dock with this one. I'm at the junction which way to go and I'm actually pointing at the wrong junction here so let's check out this one navigation locked and yep yeah, that's this one so it looks like I'm setting these up in advance at the moment so that once we start running and that's pointing upwards again once we start running hopefully we can simply activate them and that's the one to the guard room and we can go down here at the moment and go into the power room and for that we're going to have to lock on to that target if you go into the power room then you can deactivate I think that cell on the floor which activates the guards in the first place so let's mosey on up there and let's unlock well let's first of all let's move that turntable so that Kathy is able to move from the spot this looks like the one and remember to dock as well before we do that and it's much easier to press that D key as you'll definitely find out let's move her down for this and now having done that if we turn back to the map she's now running and she's saying oh no I've now found another security door that's what the thing is blinking in the bottom corner guess what I found another security door can you open it for me all right then well it's below us at the moment and you can see nothing on the floor which shows us that we can move through those panels but if we aim for the middle of the floor panels that should teleport us between the decks so now let's check that out the door is now open and she can move into the power room so let's see what she manages to find in the power room in the meantime we can always navigate Navalock on that door and well that's another message let's see there is a power terminal in here um, it might be worth checking this circuit out and if you lock onto that it will tell us where the power is look at that she's on her way back now she's investigated that power room and so we better knock out the security door I think first of all um, well I've just blown that up and now we can hopefully return to that turntable and get her moving again okay that's the security door hopefully and now nav locking on we can nav lock onto that you don't have to be absolutely precise you can be within a large number of squares because there are very few items on the blueprint you don't have to be absolutely near it to be nav locked on the game is very generous with that it's just that I like to be absolutely in the middle of it and remember to dock of course so now let's move it to the right and having exited that that will automatically trigger that turntable so let's check out where Kathy is at the moment she's now moving towards that panel on the floor that means the guards are now going to be moving so I've opened that door so I need to get to that turntable straight away I think maybe let's just see what that guard does and the guard continues hopefully north yes look at that the guard continues north and that means that Kathy will now be stopped on this turntable it's pointing north so she can't move anywhere so now we can now never lock to that spot here we are at another junction which way now boss okay well we've sent the guard north what does that mean well if we follow the guard because I've played this level already we know what happens to him let's follow that guard and if you zoom in on this spot you'll notice it's another electro trap 
and if the guide touches that it'll get fried so that's the guide now out of the picture off the level completely and now we can navigate through the level because that electro trap is no longer in existence so again remember to dock with these things otherwise you'll simply collide with it and that's damn annoying when things are time critical so now we need to move let's see hopefully we've moved that in the right direction and let's scroll down is Kathy now running up even though we've moved that to the right why did I move that to the right I should be really moving that upwards unless I want to really investigate the guard room which I don't really think is necessary at this point and let's navigate back and let's move that again now she's running again now the next problem where to get to next well it's not too much of a problem because number one there are no more guards on the level and number two she's going to be stopped at every single one of these gates the guards can simply push the way through them as soon as they're activated but Kathy will say well what to do next boss so again all of this stuff on the level is eye candy and all that we need to worry about is the switches and I've noticed we're on the right level because we're green we've got the green arrows and it looks like I'm flying in a circle completely around that blue gem that we've flown directly past so let's circle around again and here it is so if it's pointing in the right direction all we need to do I think is press the right mouse button that will take us directly out of that screen again and that's a previous message I think I'm at the junction let's just check her out on the map she's no longer there so she's running north at the moment and that's not too bad because she's actually running to a workshop and in the workshop let's see what there is in the workshop uh, generates clones well maybe she can activate that and give us some intel on what's going on and so what's going on Kathy and this is a manufacturing area examining the circuits to see if they'll be of any help well it's all very well and good and you can see her face appears in the corner and also her avatar as well in the virtual world so she's gone through that it's now time to go up to the lift we're now going up to the third level I think there are maybe six seven eight levels in the game I'm not quite sure let's knock onto that security door and now right at the end of this level it gives us all the time in the world to recharge before we open up that last door so let's open up the last door first of all and now usually if we head on down to level zero it will take us all the way down to an energy recharge point and that would be helpful to memorize that otherwise you can click on the power units on the map and speeding up this footage for a moment you can see all these weird things like frogs and things going around the level it's pretty interesting to see them and you can blow them up I've no idea what that does for us everything else is basically eye candy in other words it's useless so ah, here we go you can actually click on the power recharge point on the blueprint and that will tell us where it is we're now docking with this and you can see it's giving us a free energy recharge that will then blow up and that's not too bad it's the end of the level so now just the small matter of activating the elevator now which means we need to find that disc so that's the ascending elevator and that's the symbol for it in cyberspace so it's somewhere above us let's fly up there and now we can move on to the third level and again as soon as you move through into that tunnel I'm in that space bar and that will mean you can save it up whilst we've still got full health
let's create a new save this is level three we've got full health in it and now you'll find the tunnels are a little bit difficult or at least they start to get more difficult because the pipes that you can see that were fixed before now start moving and now it's a bit like flying through rings on a Grand Theft Auto game you have to get that trajectory perfect and then you don't take damage and now we managed to survive that with most of our energy let's save it up again and you have to click on OK for some reason and I'm gonna save it up over that same spot and now the enemies will start droning in on us you can see this one's firing towards us and these horrible bees are a menace because they will drain our energy and you can't shoot them only with a missile so let's press enter and get ready to launch that missile and if you miss that will blow up and with this you have to activate the tractor beam you can see and if you fire a missile and then grab it with our tractor beam that should mean it blows up and it's pretty difficult to do that you can see we managed to do it using the activation keys and so ooh, this is the third level now we do ramp up in difficulty and now we've got lots of other things to worry about we're gonna have to explore now everything on the blueprint to figure out this level we're at the intersection at the moment so I think the second section was a workshop level in this one it's more like a an enemy zone and there will be various enemy places they're all activated you can see by them pressure pads we can't deactivate the pressure pads unfortunately and so we have infinite missiles in this game to blow away those bats and so what are we doing it looks like we're activating the first pressure pad that she was stuck on at the beginning but you can see as soon as she does that she runs south again that will activate a robot if you don't get her away from that place pretty quickly she'll then get caught by the robot and that's level over so I'm not quite sure no she's been caught and you can't do anything else at that point it simply comes up game over so now the time critical aspects of this game come into the fore definitely on the next level as well but for this one you'll have to get used to looking at those arrows in the center of that screen whatever it says to do dive on in there as quickly as possible quickly launch in the general direction of whatever you're supposed to be tracking onto lock onto that dock by pressing the button beforehand don't waste time with the pointer click the button dive on into that and you can see she's been caught again so this level 3 had me stumped for quite a while and I don't mind telling you I had to practice on this level an un number of times uncountable umpteen number of times before I got it right so you can see without the tractor beam the fly butterfly thing will simply fly around it forever so it's those hints and tips that you have to start to master now that you're moving through the game and enemies on our side will turn up as flying vehicles and enemies and police ships that can only be knocked out with a missile so you'll have to use the tractor beam sometimes to use those and it's great that the tractor actually has a function and so you can move keys around with that and you can also move around other things so you can see I'm speeding up the footage because this is time critical and I think those enemies come out of these enemy placings here but we want to really lock on to the enemy itself sometimes when you blow these up all that will happen is a new enemy will spawn out of the generator and I found particularly on this level I've killed all of the enemies and yet they simply respawn out of that generator and it's also pretty difficult to lock on given the fact that the missiles run out of fuel and the enemy stays out of range so you have to get used to doing that very quickly otherwise uh, it's not going to work and sometimes the enemy can blow a missile up for us as well
So we only take small damage at this point, and look at that, we're falling over an energy recharge point. Where are we now? Well, she's still waiting at the first turntable. So, have we activated that? You have to activate those in sequence. And so what I'm doing is activating the next one before I've activated this one. And I'm turning that around so that as soon as Cappy touches that, we can run to that spot and to get her moving again in the opposite direction. And now having done that, it's time to trigger off our runner. And that means we're going to have to be running from here on in. Now I'm going to select the next target before we've activated the current one. And that means... From now on, we're on the clock. Now by doing the same thing again, it means that we don't waste time selecting that and by pressing that right mouse button it means Kathy can get running again in the opposite direction. What does that do? Well we've used the trigger pad and that has activated the robot. So all we need to do is to get out of the way of that robot and that should mean that we can send the robot into a side room. Kathy's now returned to the top one again, so let's check that out. We can now force it to run to the right, and as she's doing that, we can now activate that again by docking with it. And that should mean that the security robot, who will be hot on her heels, is actually now moving towards that. And because we've got that now pointing to the left, you can see on the blueprint, that means the robot will now move into that side room. So now all we've got to do is to do exactly the same thing again for a second time to distract a second robot. Let's just recharge. And definitely, if you manage to find yourself in a safe spot that isn't time critical, it's a good idea to recharge and vacuum up that energy. And I had to retry this level a number of times because even though I tried it all kinds of different ways, it was the fact that you have to get on that map and line your navig point up with the next target first of all, before you've activated the current one, and that saves you time because as soon as Kali starts running you don't want to be fumbling around with the map and you can see we can even blow things up so where are we now so Kali's up there it looks like so let's activate the second one well the first one and activate the second one so it's pointing in the right direction and now let's point that upwards and now let's fly back to the first one again so that we can start the runner off and trigger off that trap all over again. And definitely if you are too slow at any point, as soon as the runners get started, unfortunately the robot will catch up with us and I've definitely learned that the hard way, definitely on this particular level. Are we ready now? Let's target the next one. And that's already locked north, that's good. So now we can run into this and set that trap off all over again. stopped by any of the enemies colliding with us like this or if you collide with the ground instead of colliding with those items on the floor it will not only take damage but will take a time loss as well and it's those vital seconds that you have to worry about in this game and again press that right mouse button 
to make Kathy run without moving that thing, and that's definitely vital because that again saves us those precious, precious seconds. It gives us maybe five or six seconds leeway to spare. So let's force Kathy now to run to the right, and just before that robot appears on that screen, we'll activate this. And if Kathy is still on the turntable, when we activate that, then she'll run in that direction, so you have to make sure that she leaves the turntable before you activate that. And again, I've definitely learnt that the hard way. So that's now both security droids in the anteroom. So now it should mean, hopefully this level is getting pretty clear of robots. It should mean that we can navigate our way through the rest of it. And apart from frogs unicycling their way around and basically bees and moths eating away at our damage we are now well we are now at the next location so let's activate that and let's now well I've gone to the left let's check out the map and let's see if that was a wise thing to do yes that definitely was because that now makes sure that we get out of the way of another guard who will now start to chase us but that's not too much of a problem in the meantime we've got another well, we've got another camera there that we'll need to deactivate. So we've activated another security pad, and that means the guard is now running. But that's not too bad because we've now got her off the pad, and that means that she's now running through the security area. And I've definitely had it before now where the guard has been running directly behind me in that security area. In the north, you can see it's running there directly behind me to the pixel because I've only just managed to get the turntable going quickly enough to get it running again. And the guy simply goes north here and goes through there, and the other ones are already pointing north, so he ends up in the exact same security area as the others. So that's fine. He'll simply branch off north even if you run out of time virtually, as long as you get to that turntable and get it moving. So with this one, it's the same thing. I've got rid of the security camera. So now as long as we are waiting by the side of that turntable, as soon as the spy runner gets to that place, activate it, and then she can run directly towards the exit. And it looks like we're halfway down now with power. It might be, after this, a good idea to find out where an energy recharge point is, because just like Star Glider, that we are reviewing the series we'll have to keep an eye on the energy so here we are here she is so now just the final security door now before we can exit the level So this being cyber die hard, I definitely have infinitely more respect for this than I ever did back in the day simply because I can understand it an infinitely amount more than I ever did back in the day. And definitely with games like this and most of these games that I've never played on the Amiga, it's the art of actually breaking the ice, plunging in and learning to swim. And I always hated that when I was growing up but as soon as I learned to swim I was never out of the swimming baths I was always underwater swimming somewhere so with things like this you have to learn to swim and once you know what to do once you figure out where you're supposed to go and what you're supposed to do the rest I won't say is easy it's pretty darn nerve-wracking and out of all the games that I've ever played on any play guide on the Amiga in my life this is the only game where I was actually visibly shaking and sweating playing it not least because I've just blown up the energy recharge point and that doesn't help because now we've only got the one power generator and if we don't find that we're going to be running out of power so now I found it looks like the exit switch so now Kathy can get out so that's her now to the exit but yeah I was visibly trembling trying to play this game this particular level because it's very very difficult to get things time critical as soon as you don't hit one of those squares on the floor and you bounce back it's going to be game over so you can see even at the exit to level three it wasn't actually possible to play the game and managed to complete it so what i did i went through this level all over again and this time there's the workshop area that's no good i'm not interested in that 
And Sentry Zone. Let's have a look at this one. This is the power unit. That's good. Let's nav lock on to that. And this is Amiga 500 footage that I'm actually swapping to at the moment. And all the rest was Amiga... Well, I think that was Amiga 3000 actually. But let's dock with this. And that means it's nice and smooth. And now recharging again. So you can see with the Amiga 500 experience, it's slightly slower. And it's not unplayable, not by any stretch. It's maybe 20% slower. And that's not too bad. So I played this level all over again because I forgot to save it up and you can always save it up in those tunnels. So let's play that all over again and this time we've got full energy. Hopefully now we can make our way down now to the exit. And we are now in there. It is possible to glance to the side of that and yes. Let's save it up without further ado. And that's my final save that I'll be making in this play guide. Not least because we're coming to the end of it, and not least because I can't complete the next level. And this is as far as I've ever got. I haven't played the game since this time. And that's because this level is pretty nerve wracking and it requires a lot of strategy. You might notice the tunnels are getting a bit longer as well at this point and we're playing the game in total for 31 minutes and 12 seconds so let's move on to that fourth level. Now the enemies will become a little bit more difficult and you can see we're not locked onto anything at the moment except for the message screen. Here we go, level 4. And in level 4 you can see that we start running straight away and we run straight through the security area as soon as we've moved down that lift. And that means that the security robot, if he hasn't noticed us before, he will be triggered as soon as we run in under that camera which the robot is actually looking at. So if he doesn't start running towards us right from the beginning we'll have to blow that up and I'm pretty sure that his soul's running anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But there we go, we blew it up, and he's now chasing us around the level. Now it's all time critical. We find different pressure pads, that's not too bad. And at this point, I think he's running after us because we went through that camera. But you can see we're going to have to move through all these security doors before we finally get to that lift room. And there are more and more security doors as we move through the level. And those keys are not necessarily on different floors and definitely you'll find more than one key on every deck so we're on level four at the moment and so sometimes it's best to trigger things in advance if there was this one in, on the same deck or well maybe it's on a different deck but if you find different switches on the same deck it's definitely a good idea to blow those up in advance at this stage and that saves us having to find them and blow them up later. So it's finding those things and blowing them up in advance and you don't get any thinking time because our spy runner is already spying and running full whack as soon as we set off in the level. We don't get time for any thinking. All we need to do is to get to that next marker as quick flash as possible. And with all the doors at the end of the level, it's absolutely paramount that you get on with that job, otherwise we're going to get stopped. So, as I say, I've got infinite respect for this game, and what it does, you are indirectly controlling one person and controlling another in cyberspace. How many games actually are, where well, you can say that, well, maybe beneath the steel sky, and we aren't actually influencing somebody else really from cyberspace. So... You can see by zooming in on these things it actually gives us some funny things. Click on here to find your way out and blow up another door and as soon as you zoom in on those you might have a bit of a laugh. That's fine but because this is time critical it's also pretty difficult as well and crashing left right and centre means that we are... This isn't speed up footage this is me playing the game very very quickly diving our way through the scenery. This is not speeded up footage, 
this is actually how quickly you can move through the game if you really wanted to and that's a benefit to this game unfortunately if you missed the level that you wanted to be on guess what you're gonna have to move through all of those levels again because on this level or on this level four there is only exits to downwards and that means that we can only fly downwards in the level you can't fly backwards and you can't fly up again so guess what we can only fly downwards and that means the level is so much harder checking out those scores Amiga user international gave it 60% Amiga Joker gave it 68 Lemon Amiga gave it 77 the one gave it 79 Dato gave it 80, Zero gave it 86, Amiga Format gave it 88, The Games Machine gave it 90, CU Amiga gave it 90, and Ace gave this 91, and Amiga Computing gave this 95%, which means it gets an average score of 8.5 out of 10. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again in another play guide and review sometime soon. Thank you.